Proverbs 31. Um, Proverbs 31 is just a little bit of background here is where I started my personal development journey. Um, and I'll talk about most of it after we cover uh, Proverbs 31, but it was life-changing for me. Um, I was struggling in several areas in my life, and God said to me, why don't you spend 30 days every morning read chapter 31? And what I mean by chapter 31 is that's chapter 31, 10 through 31. So I did that for 30 days. And I was like, wow. So I did it for 60 days. And then finally, I did it for 90 days. And um, by the time I finished with that, they say an old dog cannot learn new tricks. Well, that's not true. <laughs> when we're talking about the word of God, it is transformative. And I will get up on my soapbox and continue to say this until the day I die. The word of God can change you. Literally, like a light switch, it can change you. And it is what it did to me. Um, and the way I read it, and I'm going to, when we get to 10 through 31, I am going to read it to you the way I read it for those 90 days. Um, and I suggest that you do this. I'm going to challenge you when this is all said and done to at least do it yourself every day if you want, if you want to change. If you don't, I mean, I can tell you about it, but you have to want it. Um, I cannot do that for you. But it's right here in the word of God. And if you can spend 60 days, that's what I recommend. I did 90. But if you can spend 60 days in his word. And here's the reason I say 60 days. And I think that's about where the switch flipped for me. But it is um, studies that show you hear that um, it takes 30, 21 days to, to um, create a habit. Well, it's not 21 days. It's actually about 66 days as an average, or so say about 60 days, depending on the habit that you're trying to change, what you're trying to change. There is actual, in the word of God, God can do anything in a day. But when we create habits in ourselves, it actually creates neural pathways in our brains. There's actual pathways. And so once we have created that habit, there is an actual pathway in our brain now. So it is the reason why it's so hard to undo a habit that we have created because we have created that pathway without even realizing it. Um, God can wipe that away in a night, but he also wants you in his word. So just because he can do it doesn't mean he's going to do it. Uh, for me, it was about 60 days. And I went ahead and did it for 90. And, and I've done it off and on since then. And this has been about, I've actually lost track ago, how long ago it was, maybe 60 days, or, or I mean, somewhere six to eight years ago that I started this journey, six years maybe, um, started doing this. But, um, and I read it in the first person, and when we get to verse 10, I will start reading and I will show you how I did that. I'm going to read right through it and then we'll come back and then we'll go over each verse. Um, but what we're going to do, first of all, is we're going to start with verses one through 30. And then when we get to the end of studying it, then I'll tell you how it changed me. Um, but let's go through the chapter first. Um, so I suggest to stick to one version. I suggest not do it in the TPT version, the Passion Translation, because it really kind of changes some of the verses. And I think it's really important um, to, to not read it in that version because of some of the ways it changes it. Because then you're not going to get the same growth that I think that you need to get out of it because again, it changes what it actually says. So, and I'll be reading it out of the King James Version. And I, in the way you read it is in first person. And I'm going to show you what I mean. So I don't know what versions you have in front of me, uh, in front of you, but um, 
it might sound a little weird the way I'm going to read it, but this is this is the way you need to do it because you're talking about you're you're talking about who you are. You are becoming this woman. You are this woman the way you're reading it. Okay, I am a virtuous woman. My price is far above rubies. And if you're not married, you can just throw out some of these verses. Um, it'll still work work the same way. Um, the heart of my husband does safely trust in me, and he will have no need of spoil. I will do him good and not evil all of the days of my life. I seek wool and flax, and I work willingly with my hands. I am like the merchant ships. I bring my food from afar. I rise, also, I rise up also while it is yet night, and I give meat to my household and a portion to my maidens. I consider a field and I buy it, and with the fruit of my hands, I plant a vineyard. I gird my loins with strength and I strengthen my arms. I perceive that my merchandise is good. My candle does not go out by night. I lay my hands to the spindle and my hands hold the distaff. I stretch out my hand to the poor, yea, I reach forth my hands to the needy. I'm not afraid of the snow for my household, for all of my household is clothed with scarlet. I make myself coverings of tapestry, my clothing is silk and purple. My husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. I make fine linen and I sell it and I deliver girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are my clothing and I shall rejoice in time to come. I open my mouth with wisdom and in my tongue is the law of kindness. I look well to the ways of my household and I eat not the bread of idleness. My children arise up and they call me blessed. My husband also and he praises me. Many daughters have done virtuously, but I excel them all. Favor is deceitful and beauty, and beauty is vain, but a woman that fears the but I fear the Lord and I shall be praised. Give me of the fruit of my hands and let all my works praise me in the gates. All right. And this is the way God told me to do it. And um, so that is, like I said, what I did for 90 days. And it was transformative. That is what I did for 90 days. And this is one of the things that it did for me. Several of the things that it did for me lately. Okay. So I was struggling in several areas in my life. Um, one of them, my husband, he still does this, but he would pop out of bed at I don't know, some insane hour in the morning, 5.30, whatever he was, he'd pop out of bed. And I miss, I don't get out of bed until I have to. And I was always wanting to be the person who got out of bed like he did, you know, and just thought it was just not ever going to be. Um, that was one thing. I didn't have no personal growth to speak of that, that, that I did consistently. Um, didn't exercise consistently, didn't have any routines, didn't have any set goals, any set plans for my life. Didn't, you know, I was not that person. When I came to the end of these 90 days, a few things happened. All, all of these things happened. It was a literal switch. I was getting up at, I don't remember if I started at 4.30 now or five, but I was getting up at, I was setting my alarm getting up at five, um, working out. I was working out five to, before I would work out inconsistently. Now I was working five, working out five to six days a week. I was um, personal growth, could not fire hose. I'm still, still fire hose, personal growth, just whatever materials that God could, you know, hours and hours of listening to preacher or teachers, or reading the word, um, personal growth materials, couldn't get enough of it. Um, what else? I would, oh, goals. I set all, I started setting goals for myself, planning out my day. I had a routine when I'd never had a routine in any before. I would get up at five o'clock in the morning. I would work out. I would then spend time with God in the word, praying, um, journaling. I would call it my, 
really cheesy, but I was calling it my PB, PB and J time, my peanut butter and jelly. It was really prayer, Bible, and journaling. <laughs> but that's what I would do. So, um, and then, and I would be done, and then I would plan for my day, write out all of the things that I had to do for my day. Um, and I would be done with that by 7.30, you know, get up at 5.30, be done by 7.30 and get my kids off to, to school and have my day all set and ready to go. Um, I'm not as rigid with that routine anymore as I was, but I went from not being doing any of those things to doing all of it all at once. And the other thing it did, and, and I'm still doing most of those things today. I need to get back into the, I have not been doing the five to six uh days of working out i need to get back into that where i'm i'm well, i'm on like two or three days a week right now need to get back to, into more but um it also changed my personality and that was the strangest thing um one of the biggest things it did is i was easily manipulated and i could not be manipulated anymore yes still cannot be manipulated mm -hmm. Now there's some things that I might just, eh, you know, fight another day kind of thing, you know, choose my battles, but I cannot be manipulated anymore. It absolutely, okay. one of the biggest things, and I have self-confidence, I've, I've changed my self-image, less fear, you know, and that fear thing has been a gradual walk because I was miss, um, uh, introvert like you would not believe a massive introvert um and so that has been a journey that was a, not a complete uh, switch um but the, the self-image part that could not be manipulated anymore it, yes completely different woman i cannot i can't even there's not words really to tell you how transformative the word is um, and that was with me doing this consistently for 90 days. And that's why I talk about, and I've had other little challenges as we've gone through these 31 weeks, um, choose, you know, uh, maybe, uh, some verses in the Bible. I, I've, I've talked about certain ones. There's a passages in Ephesians and, uh, and Colossians where you can read those for 30 days, 60 days. It changes you. The ways, the places that you want to change in your life, go to the places in the Bible where it's talking about those things and drink that word in, soak that word in um, and do it for 60 days or however long it takes until it changes you. The word of God is God. It's life. And um, so it can change. And so this is what I'm for those of you who want to do it, I suggest you do it. You know, start, you know, you can start January 1st, you can start whenever you want, but make a plan. Really important to start your day with a routine. Even if all the routine is, is to spend 30 minutes in the word every morning in the word and praying with God, because it changes your entire day. Yes. changes how you're going to walk through the day, changes how you're going to be able to um, handle the things that are uh, thrown at you. And the other thing that I also recommend strongly is that you write down each day the things that you need to do each day because it's going right. to completely change your day as well. Um, mm -hmm. When you actually have a plan for your day, because if you do not have a plan, you have well, there's no, there's no target. So you get to the end of the day and you don't not achieved anything, you know? So if you were to write down three things every day at the beginning, every day, um, I want to accomplish these, these three, three things. You'll discover that where you were not getting anything done before, you will have at least gotten those three things done every single day that you wrote down to do, you know, you can start small. And work, work, work your way up. Schedule out your day. That way you do actually accomplish it. Otherwise, you don't. 
<laughs> and the other thing that that does is when you write down a plan for yourself each day, it, for some reason, it takes away stress and overwhelm and anxiety. Yes. yes. Because if you're going throughout your day without a plan, it creates overwhelm. It creates anxiety. It creates stress because you don't have a plan. But when you actually write it down, I'm going to accomplish these things today. It yes. settles your mind. And your mind is on what am I, what am I going to accomplish today? And you get those things done. And so it is just a great, actually a great tool for one to accomplish it and two to combat overwhelm. So just a few little tips and tricks that I have learned along the way, mm -hmm. but this is where I started my personal development growth journey. And it has been an ongoing one since. And it will continue to be one because we never get to the end of the road. You know, when you start, when you stop learning and stop teaching yourself and you stop growing, well, that's when you start dying. I don't know. That's this. You don't ever want to be in that place. I don't ever want to be in that place. You know, you always want to be learning and creating. So if you don't have it here, you don't have it to give. We already talked about that. You have to fill your well so that you can provide it to others. There's people waiting out there for each one of us. There are people who need, we have solutions. We have, we have okay. what some, everybody else, we, not everybody else. We have our sphere that God has waiting for us to step up. And a lot of the times it's where we've had our victories. Where have we had our victories in our life is a lot of times what our purpose is. Um, not always. Not always. Um, he may, he may, he may have other purposes for us, but a lot of times it is where we have overcome is where he's going to, is what the path is going to continue to be our path because now we have the solutions and the tools to help somebody else mm -hmm. um, in that particular place because we know all about it. <laughs> mm -hmm. He's, we've walked through it yes. um, and we have overcome. Mm -hmm. 